Gardens in Woodlawn was first constructed in the early 50s as a 13-acre co-op with winding paths. With 35 buildings and nearly 700 units, it quickly became a premier housing choice for African-American families. Making a better community. You get it? You want me to put it in my pocket? I'll put it in my pocket. You want me to put your garbage in my pocket? You gonna put it in your own pocket? Right, okay, cool, cool. I'm Liz, a good friend of the communities, and I'm also here to help out the children who are in need of help, who want to go out, need homework done, tutoring. If you need help, call me up. But my job today is to make sure I get the children off the streets from selling drugs. Um, number one, I grew up around a lot of people and I was born and raised in the projects myself and I grew up with violence and um, plenty of bullying, I should say, right? Um, and today we're here to stop that. We want to make the community a better community and a better place for a better living for, for all of us. So that way these children can grow up look into a much more spiritual path and a way to explore the education to another level. Uh, what it is is, it's the need for, you know what I'm saying, higher education in our communities. You know, what I've noticed is, it's a lot of different people in different communities who educate their children differently. Who children go to home school and who children also, you know what I'm saying, are enrolled in college degree programs before they even are at the age that they require to graduate out of eighth grade. But the problem in our community is we have parents that are not knowing, we have parents that don't have access to knowledge, and when you tell them they're so skeptical about what they can do and what they cannot do that they, to the fact that they don't know they lost, so they react to you saying, well, oh, what you mean? Your child can't go to, can't go to, um, home school, you need to put your child in public school, they need to be in a real school, they can't learn that way. But as we continue to research and continue to see ever so often, we always see a child that's recommended, that's, you know what I'm saying, highly, you know what I'm saying, praised because they went through they went through home school and they now are graduating from college with college degrees at the age of nine to 15. Like, why do we put restrictions on our children education? When I was growing up, this was considered the elite property for doctors, lawyers, nurses, you know, professional people that lived over here. This was the cornerstone of our community. Today, I have a crisis that I had overcame. Um, let's see, I grew up in the projects, raised um, with separate families, um, families today, um, living drug free, tobacco free, and just think about the life that I did experience uh, with dealing with being molested for over six years. And look at me today. I'm young and I'm beautiful and I'm still here today, see day to day. And I just want everybody else to know just because you have been down and out and you didn't have nobody to go to, turn to prayer and prayer will help because God will hear you and he will listen to you and he will come to you when, you, when it's your time in need. Where I had no one to depend on, and the only person I had to depend on was myself and God. And now here today, I have two young, beautiful children that I have to watch over. And I also um, went to college to further my education. To teach them young, just like I just sat here and taught this baby how to keep this park clean off his own candy paper. Like, it was just so simple for me to show him that I got my freeze pop paper in my, in my pocket. So you gotta pick your candy paper up and put it in your pocket, and it was easy. But the problem is, we don't think we got access to do that. We don't think we think we need authority for somebody else to tell us what we need to do with our children and make them better. Look at our community. We stuck here in a hole where we cannot get out, and we need our children to grow up in a nice, healthy environment. As far as going out to educational places, going to. Uh, places where I know that we can entertain our children that's out there in other places, you know, far as church, you know, give God his blessings, so, because God has blessed us, 
As, you As time passed, however, years of absentee ownership, deteriorating conditions, and a small but violent criminal element took their toll. If you feel like, you know what I'm saying, there's something in your community that you feel like needs to be done, and you and you complaining about it, make it your responsibility. Don't sit around complaining. It's power in numbers. And the more and more and more of us that come together, especially the mothers, it takes a mother, it takes a village to raise a child, but the nation can rise no higher than its women. So if we keep on operating on the lower level of thinking, then our children are going to continue to operate on the lower level of thinking. If we continue to raise children and, boy, children and, and bless children out of, out of um, broken homes and brokenness, then we're going to have broken children. Peace. But that's all that I have to say for now, is that my life is better, and I, so I have to be a better mother and have much more understanding with, with, um, with my children as far as um, molestation. There's a lot of children out there that um, be afraid to tell their parents or afraid to tell someone because they have gotten threatened. And I'm, I'm, one, I'm one of those advocates that have gotten threatened and who, who also was afraid to tell anyone because of the most um, dangerous threats that have got thrown at me throughout my life. So today I'm here blessed and still looking for prayer. And if you want those people that's out there who want to pray for me, you can pray for me too, because I will hear and I will pray for you too.